Hi, this is Josh Davey, Livestock and Range Advisor in Tehama Glen and Calusa Counties and County Director in Tehama County. I want to credit Western SARE and the University of California as well as Jeff Stackhouse and Lania Davidson for bringing together these presentations that help better manage weeds used through the use of prescribed fire. In this case, this presentation targets how we can use fire to control yellow star thistle as well as a little bit about the plant itself to make the control information make sense. Yellow star thistle is not technically an annual or often considered a biannual plant. It germinates through the fall, winter, and spring, mostly through large rainfall events, which is actually somewhat unique to the plant in that day length and temperature are less determinants of, uh, of germination as compared to just a, a large rainfall event, meaning it can germinate at any time through the season, which matters in some of the control efforts that are used on it. It's actually part of of an interesting part of the plant too that even late germinating plants such as March and April can often survive and make seed where in other types of grasses or, or flowering annuals this is not possible. It generally flowers in late spring and then makes seed in early summer and this holds true through this presentation in terms of uh, tocolati or multi star thistle a com a, uh, another star thistle that's act that's common throughout the sacramento valley uh, though not seen as high in numbers as yellow star thistle but most of the information pertains to it with a key difference between the two being the yellow star thistle eaten in enough quantity can be toxic to horses where multi star thistle generally is not this is a seedling of yellow star thistle Usually they go largely unnoticed because they blend in well with most other annual broadleaf plants that are germinating throughout the season. So generally you won't even notice that this plant is here until it reaches this stage, which is called the rosette. And in this, it's a pretty distinct plant. Um, it can be confused with mustards often, but, um, but in general, it can be picked out from other plants. At this stage for livestock, it's actually a very palatable and nutritious plant and they'll readily consume it. Um, oftentimes over other forages that we consider to be desirable. The plants that germinate early in the year send down extremely deep roots. Later germinating plants that will be shaded out will actually grow shallower roots. This is significant in several ways. First, the plants actually can be outcompeted by um, competitive forages that would shade them out and eliminate their ability to make deep roots. It also means that where the plants become established, they're able to completely fill the soil profile with both deep roots and shallow roots, actually using up most all of the available moisture and causing a miniature drought for those plants around it. This is actually yellow star thistle's competitive ability and why it does well. You generally um, will hear a lot of times people say that you can um, water out or irrigate star thistle and it'll go away. Well, the plant actually itself loves water and barring no competitions around, it'll do very well with irrigation water and get even bigger than it would have otherwise just on rainfall. However, when competing vegetation such as grasses are around it, by irrigating, you're eliminating the competitive advantage star thistle has. So um, they're actually able to shade it out. Do and, uh, and star thistle is not able to take care of its miniature drought suppressing competitive abilities. By the time the plant reaches this stage, which is later in the spring, its roots are, can be as far as four to six feet. I've actually seen some experimental projects where we've measured them down to 10 feet, but in general the roots are um, so providing will be two to four, six, two to four feet deep. This is also why star thistle prefers better soils. You don't tend to see it in really shallow soils or soils that don't provide um, an adequate ability to, for, to provide moisture that the plant likes. Because of this maturity date that the plant has, this plant's in full bloom with the yellow flowers that you can see there. At this time, the plant is no longer palatable to livestock that aren't trained to eat it because of these spines that are growing out from it and as most of us know that's also the time we don't like it because that's when it gets stuck in our in our pants and shoes and everything else once seeds are produced a single large plant can produce over a hundred thousand seeds and these seeds use these bristles right here to stick in in the hair of livestock wildlife or in the vehicles and including pickups and atvs that we drive so Drive, when driving around, be careful thinking about driving over the um, old 
dead star thistle plants that you see because um, those plants actually have those with those seeds with those bristles actually you can be spreading them with the with the, the vehicle that you're using the seed bank doesn't last very long in the soil usually a plants only last two to three seeds only last two to three years on the soil surface and the reason for this is that actually most of the time most of them germinate as they go so getting to the point of the of the presentation the combination of how do we use fire to control it this is actually a controlled burn that was done to control both medusa head and star thistle you can see the green star thistle still in it where most all the other grasses have actually died this is a june burn these star thistle plants would actually not even be mature until july but this is an optimal time to burn it as i show you this picture here you can see this is the yellow star thistle that's still green, it has not produced seed where most all the other grasses are dry. For two reasons, this is an optimal time to burn it. The first is that you have enough fuel with the other dry grasses around there to actually be able to carry the fire to burn those green plants. The second is that with this star thistle where it has not produced seed yet this season, you're eliminating an entire seed production season, which is important knowing that the seed bank doesn't last that long. That said, this, unlike other weeds, may have some benefit to a fall burn, even though you're not eliminating that current year's seed production. And the reason comes with the whole challenge and yet opportunity of using controlled burning for star thistle control. The burn itself may actually control the current year's seed production, but it does not control the seeds that are already there. Generally, grass fires are not hot enough to affect seeds that are laying on the soil surface, only the seeds that are still on the plant. However, after a fire, the year after, for a yellow star thistle will spark germination of the seed bank. What that could lead to is um, an opportunity, but it also could lead into a considerable failure if no follow-up is done because a single burn may actually cause the star thistle stand to thicken up because all of the seeds will sprout the following year. That said, seeds all having all the seeds sprout within a single season following creates an opportunity to be able to actually eliminate um, why a yellow star thistle altogether. In fact, burning is in conjunction with a follow-up is one of the only methods that we know that produces nearly 100% control. So how do we do a follow-up in the years following that? One idea would be a, a follow-up burn in the season after um, or two consecutive years of burning. This can be highly successful. Uh, one of the only downsides with this uh, is the, the second year in most sites that don't have some kind of a coastal influence actually are limited and that they don't have enough fuel to be able to carry a second burn. Other operators and livestock managers may also complain that it lessens production enough in other grasses that um, giving up that production two years in a row may not be desirable. So. Burning can work, but has um, restrictions. Another idea that's commonly brought up is grazing or mowing. Mowing at the onset of flowering, when the plant has 5 to 10 percent of the yellow flowers on the top, is actually can be a very successful method of controlling the plant from being able to make seed and work. However, if, if mowed too early, the plants tend to just regrow and in fact, repeated mowings consecutively too early can tr actually train the plant to grow prostrate and uh, eliminate any chance of that working. Grazing runs into the same problem in that it requires heavy numbers. It requires a repeated grazing because the plant will uh, recover from the grazing bout due to its extensive root system. And the timing actually has to be earlier than mowing because livestock won't eat the plants once the uh, spines come out except in with uh, specific species or in certain circumstances. So the hard part in grazing, particularly for folks that are spring calvers, is they've got a cow that's lactating, has a high nu nutrient requirement, and the grazing time will go late into the season when most other forages are brown and don't have the forage quality to maintain that cow. Others with dry cows that don't have a la that aren't lactating may be able to use this as a method. In, off, in many cases in the Sacramento Valley and, uh, and others where cattle are moved to summer pasture, it just may not be feasible because they can't graze the plant late enough before they actually move on. So trials will show successes and both failures in terms of managing yellow star thistle through grazing. 
which leaves us with herbicides as an option, which is a very viable option. In one case, uh, one management component may be looking at just a post-emergent herbicide, such as 2,4-D, dicamba, or triclopyr. Timing on these applications is very important. I mentioned earlier that star thistle, in one of the first slides, that star thistle can germinate throughout the year. That's important because these herbicides are very good at killing the plants that have germinated, but are not effective at controlling plants pre-emergently or those that germinate after the application is made. So these timings need to be done in late spring when moisture is exhausted enough that the plants can't recover. Another option that's commonly used is glyphosate or Roundup, which is very popular because it has the ability to kill the plant very quickly, so it can be done later than the growth regulators like 2,4-D or triclopyr. The, advantage, the disadvantage with using glyphosate is that it's non-selective. So in sites where there are other target plants that may be green later in the season, such as perennial grasses, the glyphosate would probably be best avoided because of damage to the perennial grasses or other vegetation that wouldn't want to be affected by the herbicide. That said, in many cases, the timing can be so late to be able to spray with, with glyphosate that many annual grasses that are desirable could have already made seed and therefore would be unaffected by the application. Some of the most popular herbicide options are pre-post-emergent, meaning they can kill small plants, but they also work pre-emergently to kill those that are germinating afterward. Those listed here, clopyrrolid, aminopyrrolid, and aminocyclopyrrolid, or commonly known as transline milestone and method, all have the ability to kill small plants as well as inhibit the germination of new plants for about a year. These treatments are very successful and can be applied generally at low rates and fairly economically to have complete season control of yellow star thistle. These are some of the products that were tested that were able to show nearly 100% control following a controlled burn with a herbicide application such as these. The other advantage with these as pre- and post-emergent herbicides is being able to be applied earlier. They can actually release the desirable forage around them because they are applied earlier before yellow star thistle is able to make uh, its miniature drought that would otherwise have hindered production of desirable species. So fire has a as a tool is can actually spark a greater number of yellow star thistle plants or if done correctly can nearly 100 percent control the plants. I hope that this presentation has provided the knowledge to be able to control yellow star thistle using a prescribed fire. If you have any questions please feel free to contact me at the information on the screen as well as Jeff Stackhouse or Lane Quinn Davidson with the University of California Cooperative Extension. Thank you.